So I have another video that shows how to use a digital caliper. Uh, and this is basically a linear caliper that we can use to measure distances. Now the thing is this one here is really, really easy. All you need to do is you need to kind of uh, push it towards uh, the thing that you're measuring and then you just read off the number directly. But there are other sorts of uh, calipers that we have as well. And when I looked in some of the covers at work, I also found this one here that has a rather nice dial. So this one here, again, it uh, basically moves back and forth. We can use it to measure the, the diameter of an object. And this one here, by reading off the, the dial here, we can actually get a measurement using that as well. But there's another one uh, which is a lot more complicated, and that's what this video re really is all about. And this thing here has what we call a vernier scale. Now this one here, uh, there's no dial, there's no numbers, uh, and it's a bit more tricky to use, but it works in exactly the same way. And basically you can use it to measure maybe the, the outside diameter, or you can measure the inside diameter, or even the depth of an object. And it's this vernier scale here that this video is all about. So this vernier scale here is actually quite hard to see. So what I have instead is I have basically a model of it which is really big and actually this is really, really useful. So effectively what we're going to look at is if we maybe measure an object using these jaws here, it's by reading the scale here that we can actually get an indication of how big that object is. So first of all we need some kind of object. So there we have maybe an object like a rock. And what we want to do is maybe see how wide it is at its widest point. So we do that by just closing the jaws very gently uh, until it kind of touches the object without squashing it. Uh, and then uh, I guess really the sort of the fun begins and it's all to do with this part here. Now when we zoom in, what you'll see is on the, on the main scale up here, uh, the distance between each of these uh, indications here is a different uh, length to the one that we have at the bottom. They're more squashed up at the bottom. And the way we read it is by first of all looking at uh, where this mark here uh, lies on the top scale. Now on this one here we can see that if that's 0 and that's 1 then that's 0 0.5. This is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And basically uh, the distance is going to be bigger than uh, 0 0.8. So I'm just going to write that down as my first part of this. So once we know uh, which kind of uh, region this, uh, this first marking is lying in, we then look, need to look along the scale here to where these two lines actually line up. And what we can see here is that, uh, around here that with the lines don't line up at all. Uh, they tend to line up um, maybe around here somewhere, perhaps uh, at this value here, which is between four and five. Uh, and it doesn't line up at the bottom either. So basically it's, mark it's lining up at the place which is, um, how many of these long will it's zero? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's nine twentieths of a millimetre along. Is that clear? I hope so. Basically, what we have is this whole thing from zero to ten is a millimetre, and it's split up into 20 smaller divisions. And it's basically the ninth out of 20. Now, if each division here is a twentieth of a millimetre, that means each of these divisions represents 0 0.05 of a millimetre. And if it's ninth one, well, that's going to be 9 times 0 0.05, which is going to be equal to 0 0.45 of a millimetre. So when it comes to the final reading for this, well, basically, uh, if that's 0 and that's 1 centimetre, it's going to be basically a distance of about 8 millimetres. And it's 8.45 of a millimetre. And this is how we can use the vernier scale to measure very small objects. So what I'll do, I'll have a look at a few more objects and you can have a go at, again, maybe commenting in the comments below about what the distances actually are. Okay, so this is the first one. Have a go at looking at what is the diameter of the end of this nut over here. Uh, secondly, uh, what is the length of it? So have a look at this. And finally, maybe what is the, the diameter of the bottom part of the thread there? So I hope that makes sense. Uh, the best way to do it is really to, to find one of these yourself. There might be one uh, knocking around at school or perhaps even in the te technology department. Uh, have a look at it, have a look at the scale and try and measure some objects and work out yourself how it works. Once you've got it, it's a valuable skill that you, you never know when it might come up uh, later in life. Thank you very much.